Zechariah chapter 11 Open your doors, O Lebanon, that the fire may devour your cedars. Wail, O Cyprus, for the cedar has fallen, for the glorious trees are ruined. Wail, oaks of Bashan, for the thick forest has been felled. The sound of the wail of the shepherds, for their glory is ruined. The sound of the roar of lions, for the thicket of the Jordan is ruined. Thus said the Lord my God, Become shepherd of the flock, doomed to slaughter. Those who buy them, slaughter them and go unpunished. And those who sell them say, Blessed be the Lord, I have become rich. And their own shepherds have no pity on them. For I will no longer have pity on the inhabitants of this land, declares the Lord. Behold, I will cause each of them to fall into the hand of his neighbor, and each into the hand of his king, and they shall crush the land, and I will deliver none from their hand. So I became the shepherd of the flock, doomed to be slaughtered by the sheep traders, and I took two staffs, one I named Favor, the other I named Union, and I tended the sheep. In one month I destroyed the three shepherds, but I became impatient with them, and they also detested me. So I said, I will not be your shepherd. What is to die, let it die. What is to be destroyed, let it be destroyed. And let those who are left devour the flesh of one another. And I took my staff, favor, and I broke it, annulling the covenant that I had made with all the peoples. So it was annulled on that day, and the sheep traders who were watching me knew that it was the word of the Lord. Then I said to them, If it seems good to you, give me my wages, but if not, keep them. And they weighed out my wages thirty pieces of silver. Then the Lord said to me, Throw it to the potter, the lordly price at which I was priced by them. So I took the thirty pieces of silver and threw them into the house of the Lord, to the potter. Then I broke my second staff, Union, annulling the brotherhood between Judah and Israel. Then the Lord said to me, Take again the equipment of a foolish shepherd, for I am going to raise up a shepherd over the land, who will not take care for the lost, or seek the young, or heal the injured, or feed the healthy, but will eat the meat of the choice sheep, tearing off their hooves. Woe to the worthless shepherd who deserts the flock. May the sword strike his arm and his right eye. May his arm be completely withered, his right eye totally blinded. Chapter 12 A Prophecy The Word of the Lord Concerning Israel The Lord, who stretches out the heavens, who lays the foundation of the earth, and who forms the human spirit within a person, declares, I am going to make Jerusalem a cup that sends all the surrounding peoples reeling. Judah will be besieged as well as Jerusalem. On that day, when all the nations of the earth are gathered against her, I will make Jerusalem an immovable rock for all the nations. All who try to move it will injure themselves. On that day, I will strike every horse with panic and its rider with madness, declares the Lord. I will keep a watchful eye over Judah, but I will blind all the horses of the nations. Then the clans of Judah will say in their hearts, The people of Jerusalem are strong, because the Lord Almighty is their God. On that day, I will make the clans of Judah like a firepot in a woodpile, like a flaming torch among sheaves. They will consume all the surrounding peoples, right and left, but Jerusalem will remain intact in her place. The Lord will save the dwellings of Judah first, so that the honor of the house of David and of Jerusalem's inhabitants may not be greater than that of Judah. On that day, the Lord will shield those who live in Jerusalem, so that the feeblest among them will be like David, and the house of David will be like God, like the angel of the Lord going before them. On that day, 
I will set out to destroy all the nations that attack Jerusalem. And I will pour out on the house of David and the inhabitants of Jerusalem a spirit of grace and supplication. They will look on me, the one they have pierced, and thus they will mourn for him as one mourns for an only child, and grieve bitterly for him as one grieves for a firstborn son. On that day, the mourning in Jerusalem will be great, like the mourning of Hadadrimon in the plain of Megiddo. The land will mourn, every family by itself, the family of the house of David by itself, and their wives by themselves, the family of the house of Nathan by itself, and their wives by themselves, the family of the house of Levi by itself, and their wives by themselves, the family of the Shimeites by itself, and their wives by themselves, all the families that are left, every family by itself, and their wives by themselves. Chapter 13 On that day, a fountain will be opened for the house of David and for the inhabitants of Jerusalem, for sin and for defilement. And it will come about on that day, declares the Lord of Armies, that I will eliminate the names of the idols from the land, and they will no longer be remembered. And I will also remove the prophets and the unclean spirit from the land. And if anyone still prophesies, then his father and mother who gave birth to him will say to him, You shall not live, because you have spoken falsely in the name of the Lord. And his father and mother who gave birth to him shall pierce him through when he prophesies. Also it will come about on that day that the prophets will each be ashamed of his vision when he prophesies, and they will not put on a hairy robe in order to deceive. But he will say, I am not a prophet, I am a cultivator of the ground, because a man sold me as a slave in my youth. And someone will say to him, What are these wounds between your arms? Then he will say, those with which I was wounded at the house of my friends. Awake, sword, against my shepherd, and against the man, my associate, declares the Lord of armies. Strike the shepherd, and the sheep will be scattered, and I will turn my hand against the little ones. And it will come about in all the land, declares the Lord, that two parts in it will be cut off and perish, but the third will be left in it, and I will bring the third part through the fire, refine them as silver is refined, and test them as gold is tested. They will call on my name, and I will answer them. I will say, They are my people, and they will say, The Lord is my God. Chapter 14 Behold, a day is coming for the Lord, when the spoils taken from you will be divided among you. For I will gather all the nations against Jerusalem to battle, and the city will be taken, the houses plundered, the women raped, and half of the city exiled, but the rest of the people will not be eliminated from the city. Then the Lord will go forth and fight against those nations, as when he fights on a day of battle. On that day, his feet will stand on the Mount of Olives, which is front of Jerusalem on the east, and the Mount of Olives will be split in its middle from east to west, forming a very large valley. Half of the mountain will move toward the north, and the other half toward the south. And you will flee by the valley of my mountains, for the valley of the mountains will reach to Azel. Yes, you will flee, just as you fled from the earthquake in the days of Uzziah, king of Judah. Then the Lord my God will come, and all the holy ones with him. On that day, there will be no light, the luminaries will die out. For it will be a unique day which is known to the Lord, neither by day nor night. But it will come about that at the time of evening, there will be light. And on that day, living waters will flow out of Jerusalem, half of them toward the eastern sea, and the other half toward the western sea. It will be in summer as well as in winter. 
and the Lord will be king over all the earth. On that day, the Lord will be the only one, and his name the only one. All the land will change into a plain, from Geba to Ramon south of Jerusalem. But Jerusalem will rise and remain on its site from Benjamin's gate, as far as the place of the first gate to the corner gate, and from the tower of Hananel to the king's wine presses. People will live in it, and there will no longer be a curse, for Jerusalem will live in security. And the Lord will send a plague on all the nations that fought against Jerusalem. Their people will become like walking corpses, their flesh rotting away, their eyes will rot in their sockets, and their tongues will rot in their mouths. On that day, they will be terrified, stricken by the Lord with great panic. They will fight their neighbors hand to hand. Judah, too, will be fighting at Jerusalem. The wealth of all the neighboring nations will be captured. Great quantities of gold and silver and fine clothing. The same plague will strike the horses, mules, camels, donkeys, and all the other animals in the enemy camps. In the end, the enemies of Jerusalem who survive the plague will go up to Jerusalem each year to worship the King, the Lord of Heaven's armies, and to celebrate the Festival of Shelters. Any nation in the world that refuses to come to Jerusalem to worship the King, the Lord of Heaven's armies, will have no rain. If the people of Egypt refuse to attend the festival, the Lord will punish them with the same plague that he sends on the other nations who refuse to go. Egypt and the other nations will all be punished if they don't go to celebrate the Festival of Shelters. On that day, even the harness bells of the horses will be inscribed with these words, Holy to the Lord, and the cooking pots in the temple of the Lord will be as sacred as the basins used beside the altar. In fact, every cooking pot in Jerusalem and Judah will be holy to the Lord of Heaven's armies. All who come to worship will be free to use any of these pots to boil their sacrifices. And on that day, there will no longer be traitors in the temple of the Lord of Heaven's armies.